excited about winning this competition. I haven't done so well in the last couple, so I'm pretty excited to take that championship belt back from Mark. So one of the concerns I have is I actually have a key chain, not a key ring, so I'm worried about those keys flopping around in my hand a bit. I really hope that I get the bottle opening test because this bottle opener is boss. You know, Jaren's kind of slow. He doesn't have the most nimble fingers. I think he's probably gonna drop that multi-tool several times. Maybe even lose it, so it's gonna be an easy win. Mark, you better watch yourself because I'm taking you down. Hey, Blade HQ Nation. Jaren and Mark here. Now it is the end of the month. That means it's time for a competition video. Now, having an EDC knife is great, so we decided to find out how an everyday carry multi-tool would stack up. That's right. For this competition, we selected two uh, keychain multi-tools or compact multi-tools to put to the test. The Leatherman Squirt and the Gerber Dime. All right, let's get out there and find out how this competition is going to work. All right, in our compact multi-tool competition, there are six stages. Let's go check them out. So right here is the scissor stage. And all of our stages have the rule of two. That means you have to do every task twice. So with scissors, you need to cut out the star-shaped pattern twice. Then cut out two strips of leather. All right, this is the screwdriver station. So the small screws, the Phillips, you have to extract, and the large screws, the flathead, you have to insert. This is where we put our files to the test. We need to file down the little extrusions on the metal until they're smooth to the touch. This is the station where you put your knives to the test. You have some retail packing you have to cut through twice, then break down two boxes as well as cut the cardboard twice in half. All right, every multi-tool has a bottle opener, so let's put those bottle openers to the test, see how good they are. Two bottles, open. Here's the plier station. The rule of two again applies. Extract two staples and then use that wire cutter and cut two links of wire. Now the catch to this competition is the wheel of choices. There are six stations, but each competitor only has to do four. It's gonna be randomly determined by a spin on the wheel. If you've already done that station once, you spin again until you get something different. Let's get it started. Three, two, one. I spun that wheel and the first thing I got was the knife. Um, so I ran over there as fast as I could, pulled it out of my pocket, and uh, flipped the knife open and started cutting. The blade has a sheep's foot point on it, and, which is nice and safe, but it is difficult for piercing. So I had to come at it at a different angle and start slicing through the top and try and pull my way through the plastic. Got both those cuts done. Uh, really watched the way I was cutting so I didn't cut myself and then moved on to the boxes. Got to that duct tape and started slicing through. Uh, it did catch here and there, but overall the knife did well and I was able to cut that duct tape and break down the box. So this is a smaller blade. Uh, it still cut the boxes in half, did the job. However, it doesn't replace an EDC. Fastest time wins. Starting out, got the clock going, warmed up my hands, gave it a nice big spin, scissors. and I got scissors. And I saw that Jaren struggled so much with the scissors, it was the one thing that I really didn't want to do. Oh no, I'm not scissors! Oh. Uh, so I ran up the stairs, I thought I might have a few techniques, having already seen Jaren use the scissors that might help me do it better. 
Fortunately, those didn't work. Initially, I tried to spread the fabric tight and taut against the table. Didn't really work. So it was really hard to find the correct angle on the scissors. I thought it would be the base, but it ended up being like the tip and it was just snipping, snipping, snipping just right on that angle and it was tough to find it. You'd lose it, you'd go for a little bit, it would cut good and then it would get caught up and you couldn't get it right. So very hard. I mean, we set it up to be a challenge and it was a challenge. <laughs> I can't believe how many cuts there are in a star. I think really the intended purpose for these kind of scissors is to catch the stray string from a pants or a shirt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're certainly not robust enough to take on hard cutting tasks and the leather proved that. That was super hard. Also when working with the leather and cutting, that repetitive motion, pushing the scissors into your thumb, it really started to get sore and painful after a while. Again, those scissors are not really robust. They're not gonna tackle big projects for you. So got back, spun that wheel. That, spinning that is really exciting. Watching it spin around and you don't know what you're gonna get. I really wanted the bottle opener, but got screwdriver. That one was right around the corner, so I jumped around. Pulled out the Phillips screwdriver and started unscrewing those screws. I kept fumbling around which way I wanted to hold it and keep the keys there. So that is a downfall of having it attached to your keys. However, you can just pull it off. Then I moved on to screwing those screws in. So I started giving that some torque to get that screw in, started to feel some flex in the screwdriver, so I eased up a little bit because I didn't want to bend the tool. The tool isn't meant to screw screws right into wood. It's meant for something around the house, something more like unscrewing a, a light switch plate or something that's already threaded. It did get the task done and I was able to move on. Done. So after struggling with the scissors, finally cutting out the star, which just had so many angles, uh, and getting the leather strips cut, came back and did another spin. So I spun the wheel, came up file. I wasn't as quite as worried because the file on the, uh, the squirt was dedicated, it was a little bit bigger, and uh, that proved to be the case. I was able to get in there, had nice long strokes. There was one side of the file that was coarse and another that was fine. Did the trick within a few minutes, it was smooth, or relatively smooth to the touch, enough that it was able to do what a file should do. I think that's good. So I went and spun it again. Again, I was really hoping for that bottle opener because the bottle opener on this thing looks awesome. <laughs> but I got the file. Of course, of course I get this thing. The one task that I really did not want to get so I ran over, started working at it, and it was impossible. Oh, that's... Everything is on this right here, the side of the file that I want to use. Yeah, it's... I'm gonna spin again. I was feeling pretty good. I thought I was ahead of Jaren on time. Spun the wheel again, spun the wheel again, spun the wheel again. I kept coming up with stuff that had already done or spin again. So, oh, 
up liars. Finally, I got bottle opener. Now, that Gerber has a killer, big old fat bottle opener. Really like it. This one, not so much. It's on one of the screwdrivers. However, it's functional enough. And you can open a bottle without a bottle opener. But if you wanted a bottle opener, you got one on this. So using the bottle opener, it took a couple pries to get it open. Took a swig, it got super bubbly, bubbled up up my nose, and I was coughing it out. I couldn't even swallow what I had. It was kind of gross, but I ended up spitting it out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so I physically couldn't get the angle I needed to complete the task. So I respun. And got scissors. I was not anticipating how difficult that was going to be. Those scissors are meant for cutting like thread on your, on your pants or little, little tasks. It wasn't meant to cut leather. I had to really bear down to chew through it, use the base of the scissors versus the tip of the scissors and just push right through. It took quite a while. So it just kept chewing through, kind of had to slow down a bit in order to, to get all the way through. Once I completed one strip of leather, I decided to move on to the material so that I could just have a break. I was able to cut through the stars relatively easier than cutting through the leather. Once I completed with the fabric, I moved back to the leather and that's when I knew I was taking way too much time. Went at a couple different angles, finally able to finish, and moved on. Got it. Came running back after my ordeal with the soda, gave it another spin, and I got pliers. So the plier stage was all the way back in the corner where I had just come from. So I had to run back there where the soda was, open up my pliers, they had a nice spring in them, was able to clamp down very easily on the staples, pop them out. That's not something you're gonna be able to do with your fingers. That's why you want something like a little tool, like a little multi-tool in your pocket. So after popping out the staples, I went to cut the wire. Choked up on it a little bit too much. It pinched down on my finger pretty good to where I got a little, little blood blister. It's a little painful, um, but I was able to get on it and get that second piece of wire cut relatively easily. So I cut off that second piece of wire. I knew all my tasks were complete. I was pretty sure I was headed Jaren at that point. So I grabbed the bottle, the little victory tour, put it in fifth gear, high-tailed it back to the stool, turn up the time. Sure enough, I think I won. The last task, I really wanted that bottle opener. I needed to make up some time, and I knew the Gerber would perform well. So I was chanting for it as it was spinning. Yeah. And I got it. So I ran as fast as I could back there. Popped one cap off, moved to the next one, uh, fumbled a bit, but got it done. Popped it off, had a refreshing drink, and ran back. I thought I did pretty well, but I think both Jaren and I struggled a bit more than we thought we would with our keychain multi-tools. Um, you're really getting a reduced size and reduced weight, which is what you want in a keychain multi-tool, but functionality also takes a little bit of a dive because of that. So overall, the Gerber Dime performed really well. It's got a great price point, nice and affordable. Uh, it's got a number of tools that can get a job done that a blade just can't do. All right, the nice thing about a keychain multi-tool is the fact that it goes on your keychain. The keys are going with you, so are these tools. And that's the biggest benefit. You always have some tools when you need them. 15 minutes, 18 seconds. <laughs> Suck it, Jaren. Well, again, that was a lot of fun. Good job, Jaren. Thanks, you too, Mark. Now, if you're interested in either the Leatherman or the Gerber, you can go ahead and click on the links below. Or if you're more interested in a full-size multi-tool, we have some great options here. Now, make sure you stay tuned for next month. We'll be revisiting the competition we did a year ago just to see how far along we've come. We'll also be doing a giveaway, so keep watching for your chance to win. We'll see you next time. Adios. All right, I know a lot of people might say it's a superior product to another product, but honestly, both the multi-tools were pretty good. They're not really 
stout, stout multi-tools, but they get the job done. Really what it comes down to is just me being a better competitor than Jaren. That <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no.